Good evening, I'm back, and we're going to uh, continue with Calamity the Natural World. Uh, we just have two more sections to go, Ocean Occupants and Desert Life, as you now can see. Um, we're going to keep going with these things for a couple more weeks, because there are five weeks worth of live stream this month so uh for better or worse this is what we're going to uh, wrap up season three with but i'm i'm enjoying it like this stuff is oddly soothing in a way um and it kind of sends me back to kind of school days because i used to play a lot of you know, I mentioned this in my last uh, um, uh, edutainment live stream. I used to play a lot of edutainment games on the Commodore 64 growing up. And um, the funny thing there is if we ever got um, grounded from the computer, there was always an exception for educational games. So... <laughs> Even if you got grounded from playing games on the computer, you could still play educational games. So I, I ended up having to um, resort to that loophole more than once. But um, when you wake up in the morning for, uh, um, for school, it's always good to have a nice, well-rounded breakfast. And for that, what goes better with breakfast than bacon and syrup? Now, I'm not saying that bacon and syrup soda should go with your breakfast, but that's what I have around right now. So I am going to uh, give this a try tonight. Oh, it's artificial bacon soda. Okay, thank you. I wasn't, you know, it didn't look like there was a strip of bacon squashed in here. But uh, this is one of the more interesting flavors I'd kind of been dreading, so <laughs> we'll give it a shot. Hey, if it works, I should try this with the uh, waffles soda and see how it tastes together. Okay, I very much smell the um, the maple, but I don't really smell the bacon that, that much. Very little bit. It's mostly the maple flavor. With just a very slight, very slight hint of smokiness that's supposed to be the bacon. So it kind of reminds me of the maple soda that I had uh, a while back. It's not bad. But I am slightly disappointed that the bacon wasn't a bit more uh, distinct. You 
Yeah. There's just no savory to it. Just the sweet. Oh well. At least it's not awful. <laughs> Alright. Let's go on with Ocean Occupants. Okay. Go with the Trilobite there. A crab? That's not. By joy. During a walk on the beach, two children and their aunt come upon an animal that's not what its name says it is. Is it an imposter? Read on to find out the real scoop. Jack Hughes! Uh, let's see here. I'm going to turn this up just a little bit. There we go. Okay, let's bring up the article. The moon was full, the tide high, and the ocean water washed over the banks of the marsh. Here and there I saw horseshoe crabs. They looked like toy tanks pushing their way through a forest of green grass. They were crawling into shallow water to lay their eggs. Later at low tide I walked out onto the sandbar to look for more horseshoe crabs. Pam and Keith, my niece and nephew, came along too. Pam found a horseshoe crab in the shallow water. She picked it up by its long, stiff tail to get a better look. Then she put it back into the water and let it crawl away. What do horseshoe crabs eat? Keith asked. Mostly small cram clams, snails, worms, and some seaweed, I replied. When we climbed back onto the grassy banks of the tide marsh, Keith found another horseshoe crab. It had been left high and dry when the tide went out. Keith turned it over and we looked closely. Five pairs of lawn legs and one tiny pair of feeding claws surrounded the mouth. Between the legs and the tail, we saw five pairs of gills. They looked like pages in a book. When in the winter, the horseshoe crab constant when in the water, the horseshoe crab constantly moves these gills so that water flows over them. This is how it breathes. Many little creatures make their home on the horseshoe crab's body. We saw several small white slipper shells. Also, two common blue mussels were attached just forward of the mouth. Between the gills, I found some little flatworms. When we finished studying the crab, Keith carried it to the water's edge. He returned it to the water gently so it could live. Most of the year, horseshoe crabs live in the ocean. They're found all, around, all along the eastern coast of North America, from Maine to Mexico. In summer, they come into the shallower waters of the bays and inlets. They join together in pairs, and the female scoops out a shallow hole in the ground. She lays several hundred green eggs. Each egg is about one-eighth inch in diameter, or less than about the, half the size of a pea. The parents do not take care of the eggs or help their young after they hatch. Each egg hatches into a larva less than half an inch long. It swims around and burrows in the sand like a worm. As it grows bigger, it molts, casts off its shell. Underneath is a new, larger shell. It's soft at first, and it stretches, then it hardens. Each time the larva gets a new shell, it looks more and more like an adult horseshoe crab. The adults, too, molt as they grow larger. I often find their empty shells washed up on the shore. I remember how surprised I was when I learned that horseshoe crabs are not real crabs. I always thought they looked like crabs. They live in the ocean as crabs do, and they eat many of the same foods that crabs eat. However, the body structure of the horseshoe crab is more nearly like that of spiders, scorpions, mites, and ticks. These creatures all have a body divided into two parts. They have a simple mouth and no antennae. Two crabs are different because they have a body divided into three parts, head, thorax, and abdomen. The crabs also have complex mouth parts, like jaws, and they have two pairs of antennae. Horseshoe crabs are very primitive animals, Oops. whose earliest ancestors lived more than 350 million years ago. When dinosaurs roamed the earth, the seas were the home of the horseshoe crabs that much, looked much like what the, blah, blah, those we see today. Many kinds of dinosaurs disappeared because they were unable to stand the changes, probably severe changes in climate, that occurred on land. One kind of reptile, or small dinosaur, gradually changed over millions of years to become what are now called birds. 
another kind of reptile became what are now called mammals. In the ocean, animals such as horseshoe crabs did not have to change so much as the land animals did. The ocean is a relatively stable place with a temperature that doesn't change much and with a constant source of moisture and food. When I see horseshoe crabs laying their eggs in the shallow waters of the mar tide marsh, I sometimes get a strange feeling. I realize that I'm seeing a simple animal of the same kind that has been doing this same thing for over 200 million years. So many changes have occurred on Earth during all that time, but the simple horseshoe crab has found a successful way of life and has survived almost unchanged. Much like crocodiles and alligators. Hey there, Infamous. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, I'm still not tasting the bacon. This is a bacon so soda with maple syrup, and I'm mostly tasting the syrup, which is fine because maple flavor in a, a soft drink is actually pretty good. On his trip, Moat discovered a dry, sandy marsh. Nope, that doesn't work. At a campfire, roast a marsh and put it on a graham cracker. That sounds tasty, but not quite what they're getting at. I got my feet wet and muddy walking through a marsh. That's the ticket. Boom. I got my feet wet and muddy walking through. Terrific! You got it! Yeah, <clears throat> it. I think it depends on how the self-quarantine thing goes, but yeah. I mean, I'm glad that it's probably not going to affect me very much. I, I do know I, and appreciate how much it's going to affect a lot of people, though. <laughs> Which statement from the article is a, an opinion and not a fact? Five pairs of legs around the mouth. The gills of a horseshoe look like pages in a book. When you are ready, select your answer. Yes, I know, Jules. Horseshoe crabs live among the coast, along the coast of North America. Ah, okay. There we go. I, I thought I was supposed to be looking for the fact, not the only opinion. Yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> I, I, Saturn games and PlayStation games can be told apart, but they do have a very similar flavor. <laughs> a little bit. Caterpillar is to butterfly as seaweed is to ocean? No, that's not it. Sandbar is to shallow water. Larva is to horseshoe crab. That sounds about right. Yeah, there we go. Moving right along. Keep it up. Moving right along. Keep it up. Yeah, I got all of them. So, do you really want to quit? No. 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 <laughs> That's kind of fun. Go back to the map. There we go. Hey, Das Nerd. Welcome. Welcome. Ah, I gotcha. Well, have fun with the with the gaming. A lobster grows by Diana Child. Have you ever heard of growing things? <laughs> Read this article about how lobsters grow and create new shells for themselves. Uh, March 31st. It'll be my last stream. Or wait, no, 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 not the 31st. Because that's, that's going to be the Tuesday. So March 30th. Because um, that's going to be my last... Uh, uh, edutainment stream of the month. And then the 31st will be uh, Ant Stream. But uh, yeah, um, 
infamous. I, I teased DOS nerd earlier today by telling him I was going to play an educational DOS game toward the end of the month. And uh, he's currently stumped as to what I'm going to pick. Let's see what the video is. Oh, cool. Yep, it's an FMV game. So it probably won't take up the entire uh, three hours, but I'll make sure I've got something else on hand, too. <clears throat> Down on the ocean floor, a lobster hides in a rocky cave. It picks and scratches at itself. Why does its dark blue-green shell seem so itchy? It's time for the lobster to grow. As the lobster grows bigger, it needs a new shell, just as you need new clothes and shoes as you grow bigger. How does it get one? First, it has to molt, which means to shed its old shell. Bend over and touch your toes. Do you feel your back stretch? That's just how a lobster starts to molt. But when it bends at the middle and stretches its back, its shell splits open. Well, that sounds pleasant. Next, it must pull itself free. It works hard to wiggle its big claws out through the tiny armholes of its shell. It struggles to pull out its eight skinny legs and long antennae. The many small petals that stick out under its body have to come out, too. In all, the lobster has to tug 28 body parts out of its narrow shell. Imagine pulling a tight turtleneck over your head 28 times. At last, it has the front half of its body free. Then the lobster switches its tail back and forth to knock off the rest of the old shell. Now its body shines a bright blue-green. It's as smooth as silk and soft as a sponge. With no hard shell to protect it, the lobster must stay hidden in the rocky cave. There, as it rests after the hard job of molting, its gut body begins to grow bigger. In two or three hours, a new shell starts to form. Like your bones, the lobster's shell contains a lot of calcium. It eats the old shell to get more calcium for the new one. You drink milk and eat vegetables to get calcium to build strong bones. Yeah, but I don't eat bones. At first, the lobster's new shell is rubbery. But in a few weeks, it turns hard. Now the lobster can't grow any larger until it molts again. Very young lobsters molt several times a year. An older lobster molts only, only once a year. <clears throat> Unlike you, the lobster will never stop growing. Even as an adult lobster, it will outgrow its shell. Each time it gets a new shell, it'll grow a little bigger. If it lives about 50 years, it will grow into a giant lobster. Giant lobsters have bodies as long as baseball bats and claws the size of catcher's mitts. So if you see a lobster hiding in a rocky cave, don't disturb it. It may be growing. Yeah, that won't make it any less tasty. Hey there, Omni X Bro. Welcome, welcome. I'm not eating bones, but I am drinking bacon and maple flavored soda right now. I'm not really tasting the bacon part. The maple is fairly dominant, so it's not that bad. Yeah, stuff it, Jules. Okay. Dave's hair is shiny because he washes it with calcium. No. Calcium is needed to make your eyesight better. Uh, no. Maria drinks milk because calcium is good for her. There we go. That's the one. Maria drinks milk because calcium is great. You got it. All right, what's next? How long does it take for a lobster's new shell to form? Uh, I thought it was one to two hours, but I can't remember. Two to three hours. Okay. Terrific. 
You got it. Terrific. You got it. Okay, skin is to snake as shell is to lobster. Yeah, I think that's right right off the bat. Let's see what the other ones are. Claw is to catcher's mitt. Calcium is to bones. Body is to baseball bat. Nope. Dunk, dunk, dunk. Great, you got it. Okay. Let's go back to the map. And on to... I like turtles! On the trail of <clears throat> baby sea turtles by Daniel Stoneburner. If you oh, like wasn't he out, mystery, outlawed by the Great Convention? About disappearing baby sea turtles. Solve the mystery and find out where they're... Awesome. Run, little turtles! Here comes the tide! Oh, that, oh there it is. Oh, all that progress wiped out. It's like dying in a speedrun. Raw. Okay, turtles are pretty cool. Okay, let's get the pointer in place here. It was a warm August night. I was sitting on the soft sand above the high tide line. Suddenly the sand near my left foot began to move. Then it began to churn like water boiling in a pot. Dozens of baby loggerhead sea tur turtles burst out of the sand. They hustled toward the water about as fast as baby turtles can go. Oh, hold on for a sec. Did I... Okay, good enough. I had just... I had... Wow. Typo. In a reading lesson. No, no, I guess that's correct. I had just had the rare good luck to see... Okay. Looked weird at first, but they got it. I had just had the rare good luck to see the new, a group of newly hatched baby turtles leave their nest and crawl to the ocean. The only signs that remained were little turtle tracks going into the ocean and a depression in the sand near my foot. The tide would soon smooth over the tracks, and the depression where the nest would, was would be filled with wind-blown sand. I began to wonder where those little sea turtles were headed. For years, it has been supposed that the young turtles swim out to sea in search of mats of floating seaweed called sargassum. But actually, that idea is not much better than a guess, because the turtles are not seen for at least a year after hatching. What they really do is a mystery, and the mystery is important enough to have its own name, the lost year. How do we know that baby turtles swim right out to sea? If they don't go out to sea right away, then we may be looking for them in the wrong place. I knew that baby sea turtles had been followed by people in boats and by people swimming. People on beaches had seen them swimming out toward the sea. I also knew that baby sea turtles had been found in the stomachs of deep water fish and caught in the open ocean. And some had been far out, been found far out at sea in sargassum weed. However, all of this was not very good proof. The kinds of deep-water fish that had eaten baby turtles also feed in shallower waters near the shore, and the baby turtles found in sargassum weed might have been carried out to sea by tropical storms. I began to wonder, do all baby turtles really go out to sea? Since that night, I have thought a lot about how to follow baby sea turtles and find where they go. How do you follow a tiny turtle in a big ocean? If I followed the turtles in a boat or swam behind them, they might think I was a big fish trying to catch them. They might try to swim away and not go where they usually do. How about a radio transmitter? Could I attach one to a baby turtle? Then maybe I could follow a turtle by locating the beeps of its transmitter with a radio receiver and special antenna. I talked over my idea with some friends. They helped me build a small transmitter about the size of a dime. 
I put the transmitter on the back of a baby sea turtle that was living temporarily in a friend's tank. The little turtle sank to the bottom of the tank. I quickly took off the transmitter from the turtle's back, and the turtle came right back to the surface. Putting a transmitter, even my little bitty one, on a baby turtle's back was not a good idea. After thinking it over, I decided to put the transmitter in a piece of plastic foam. The plastic foam would help the transmitter float and not make the turtle sink. But this made a new problem. The tiny transmitter was no longer the size of a dime. It was now almost the size of a big toe. It floated, but it was too much it was much too big to put on the back of baby turtle. I decided to put a six foot long string onto the on the piece of plastic foam and attach the other end of the string in a hole punched in the turtle's shell. I tried this on a little turtle in my friend's tank. The turtle swam around as if nothing happened, towing the transmitter behind it. So I went to work and built 24 of the transmitters and put them in pieces of plastic foam. Almost a year passed and it was turtle hatching season again. My friends were ready to put the floating transmitters onto baby turtles coming out of a nest. Some of them had radios to follow the beeps from the beach. This was great, because I had decided to follow the beeps from a plane. On a warm August night around midnight, my friends located another nest and attached transmitters to the shells of the baby turtles just as they left their nest. I was in the airplane overhead, following the beeps of the transmitters. By sunrise, I had located the baby turtles several times from the plane. And you know what? Those turtles did not swim out to sea. They swam to creeks that came from salt marshes on the mainland. Just because one group of baby turtles did not swim out to sea right away does not mean that all baby turtles do the same thing, but that one group certainly raises some questions. Do most baby turtles go, out to, go to creeks and salt marshes before going out to sea? What do they do there? How long do they stay? You can see that this experiment created more questions than it answered, but that is frequently what scientific research does. Perhaps one day I will learn what baby loggerhead turtles really do during their lost year. You know, that string idea doesn't sound like a very good one either. What if something eats the turtle? It's going to have that string coming out of its mouth. I'm sure nowadays we could get even smaller trans transmitters. I'm actually kind of curious what's happened in the past 25 years. <laughs> if they've solved that problem or not. Okay, Jeremiah used a churn to make his bed. No. Jan dreamed of gray clouds that churn into white clouds. No, usually it's the other way around. Probably the whirlpools churn up many things below the water's surface. Whirlpools churn up many things below. Super job. Super job. Where did the baby turtles go? They swam to creeks. Terrific. You got it. Dang right, I did. Okay. Swimming out to sea. Oh, are we uh, giving it a name? Hmm. Here's how to play this clue game. Now look for the highlighted paragraph and decide which subtitle. Oh, okay. Gotta find the highlighted paragraph. Okay. <clears throat> there we go. <clears throat> All right, so uh, let's go with following baby sea turtles. 
right on. Okay. I knew you could do it. That was a tricky one because swimming out to sea would have fit too. Oops. Wrong button. Map. Okay, last one in the ocean occupants section. It's the Pacific the Northwest Forest Octopus. Look, although there exists a type of octopus called the Blue Ringed Octopus from Australia that is highly poisonous, most octopuses are shy and timid. Read about some of the tricks the octopus has hidden up its eight sleeves. Octopi have sleeves? Show me an octopus. Wow. That's like more pixelicious than the other videos they had. It was kind of cool. I wonder what it felt like to, you know, hold the octopus, though. In the world of fiction, the octopus is often a vicious villain. But in the real world of the ocean, the timid octopus is one of the gentle monsters. Often mistakenly portrayed as giants which can devour a mere human in one gulp, most of the 140 species of octopus are less than three feet from tentacle tip to tip. Some miniature models are less than a half inch across when full grown. Oh, pardon me. A large Pacific dweller grows as large as 30 feet, but neither this octopus nor any other makes a habit of attacking people. The octopus appears to be all head and arms. Its human-like eyes stare constantly because they have no covering lids. Its eight arms have rows of suckers, like suction cups, which help it in crawling about on the seafloor and holding on to a captured food supply. The octopus also moves itself about by jet propulsion. Water is pulled in through the gills and squirted violently out through a type of exhaust pipe. The force of the squirt moves the octopus along. Yeah, I know how that goes. When an octopus attacks, when an enemy attacks, the octopus squirts out an inky smoke screen. While the ink is clearing away, it's jetting off in the opposite direction. Scientists find octopus ink to be something of a mystery. It's harmless to human skin and has little or no effect on fish. It may t tend to paralyze the sense of smell of the octopus' most feared enemy, the deadly moray eel. The octopus possesses a number of interesting abilities. It can change colors as the situation demands. For when it is on sand, it wears a pale yellow. A rocky terrain calls for a reddish brown. And for strolling through seaweed, what else but a healthy green? The octopus can even change color to fit its mood. When it's frightened, it may become ashen gray and when angry, a furious red. It can also produce two-tone effects. On a rippled surface, it appears to be rippled. On a splotchy surface, it looks splotchy, and on a smooth surface, smooth. The octopus is a noted escape artist. It can ooze through an opening less than half an inch wide. An English aquarium keeper tells the tale of his octopus's nighttime habit of crawling out of its tank, making its way to a tank of small fish, having a forbidden banquet, and then returning to its own tank. I've heard that story before. The octopus can be taught simple things like taking food from a human hand. Some have even been trained to remove lids from jars to get at the food inside. Humans and moray eels are the greatest enemies of the octopus. In parts of the world where its meat is considered a treat to eat, the octopus is in danger of being exterminated. But octopus is not commonly used as food in the United States, so our seawaters are alive with the creatures. The female octopus is a devoted mother. She will lay as many as 45,000 pearly white eggs, each the size of half a grain of rice. These she deposits in long necklaces along, ropey surf uh, along rocky surfaces. Then she stands guard of, over them for six to eight weeks of incubation. During this period of guard duty, the female octopus goes on a severe diet, eating nothing for the entire time. Now and then she lovingly bathes her eggs by squirting them with a stream of water. 
Should an enemy or another octopus approach, she drives it away. All the tender attention given to the eggs vanishes the minute the young are hatched. Then the female crawls off to engage in other octopus activities, leaving her babies to fend for themselves. The octopus likes a rocky sea floor, preferably near a boulder-strewn shore as a home. It finds or digs a niche under a boulder, crawls in, and sets up housekeeping. The doorway is very small and difficult to spot, unless, of course, you happen to be another octopus. A clue to the habitation is likely to be a collection of crab and oyster shells and stones piled up in front. If you should come across such a dwelling and decide to make a social call, don't expect a hospitable welcome from the owner. In fact, it's likely to reach out a tentacle and draw the pile of debris into the opening, the octopus's way of slamming the door in your face. Most of the scare stories concerning the octopus should probably be attributed to the giant squid. The squid will bite when bothered or caught. In contrast, the octopus is mild-mannered and, for all practical purposes, harmless. Its habits are not ugly, just its looks. Oh, ending on a burn, come on! I think they're kind of cute in a way. <clears throat> Dewey hiked in a forest and saw a fur with a niche in its trunk. Eh, that could be it. At a museum, Gemma saw a mobile hanging in a niche on the wall, and the batter struck that out at the at the fast niche in the ball game? Okay, so it's definitely not three. Hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna go with this. At a museum, Gemma saw a mobile hanging in a niche on the wall. Okay, good. I wasn't 100% on whether that was going to be the right one, because, I mean, there could be a niche in the trunk of a fir tree. Why isn't the octopus able to close its eyes? Well, it has no eyelids. It is physically incapable of closing its eyes! Alright, you made it! Okay... And the clue. Probably need to look for another uh, highlighted paragraph again. Nope. Okay. The sea creature may cause some alarm, but its eight long legs will do no harm. Ah, back to the poetry, I see. With these ten arms that can't be shed, it shoots like a torpedo straight ahead. Okay, that's more of a squid thing. From sand to sea, they seem to go. If they stay there, nobody knows. Well, that's more of a sea turtle thing. Going through the water with fins makes it easy to swim and spin. They don't have fins. There we go. <clears throat> You're a fantastic reader. A good job exploring ocean occupy. Thank you. All right, last one. Let's go on to desert life. Oh, this doesn't look like it's going to be very much about animals. A Trickle in the Desert by Layla. Imagine living in a place where you couldn't get a drink of water or take a bath anytime you wanted. Read about how some scientists found enough water in a desert to support an entire village. Oh, that sounds cool. But I want to see the video. Ah, the Atacama. Okay. I'm a bit of a geography nerd. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Life in Chungungo was harsh. The village sits on the coast of Chile, between the Pacific Ocean and the El Tofo Mountain, but the people had almost no fresh water. There's no river or lake nearby. Rain rarely falls, so there were no gardens. There were no trees. Many people left their homes and moved south, where they could have water and electricity, but 350 people stayed in Chungungo. These villagers lived by fishing in the ocean. They painted their homes bright orange or green or blue, and they hired trucks to haul water to the village from a well 25 miles away. Trucking their water was so expensive that each villager could afford to use only four gallons of water a day. On average, most people in the United States and Canada use about 90 gallons a day. What? I can assure you that's nowhere near how much I use. <laughs> in Chungungo, bathing in fresh water was a luxury. Life in Chungungo might have been better. Almost constantly, clouds flow in from the Pacific Ocean toward El Tofo Mountain. But these clouds pass over the coast, dropping very little rain. When a cloud plows into El Tofo and the other mountains that line the coast, the cloud is called a fog simply because it's touching the earth. Each of these fogs, called a kamanchaka, rolls over the mountains. Over the scorching desert between the coastal mountains and the Ad Andes, the fog evaporates. Scientists in Chile and Canada thought they could help the people of Chungungo. By studying a nearby grove of eucalyptus trees, they found a clue about how they might capture the fog's water. On El Tofo, the tiny water droplets that make up the Kamanchakas collect on the tree's leaves, forming larger drops that fall to the ground. This grove seems to have constant rainfall from within. The scientists experimented to find a way of using this property of the fog to draw water out of it. The basic idea was simple. They would place plastic nets upright like sails on the mountain. As the fog passed through the nets, many droplets would hit the netting, merge into larger drops, and run down toward the ground. At the bottom of the nets, the water could be collected. To see if the idea would work, they placed small nets, one meter square, at various places along the mountain ridge of El Tofo. Some of these nets gathered several gallons of clean water every day. By noticing which nets collected the most water, scientists identified the best spots for placing larger nets. The scientists helped the villagers put up 75 large nets, each about 40 feet long and 13 feet high. They built a system of gutters, pipes, and a reservoir to catch the water and make it flow into the village. At first, the villagers, villagers were skeptical. They never believed water would flow to their homes. They joked that only fog or smoke would come out of the taps. But when water flowed out of the pipes, the villagers were overjoyed. They had a party dancing in the street and splashing one another with water. Now water runs into every home in Chungungo. Small gardens bloom in most front yards, and meals in the village often include salads and vegetables. Scientists say the system does not take, away, take vital water away from other areas. I was wondering about that. They estimate that the nets remove only one droplet from every 1,000 water droplets in the fog, and all of that fog evaporates on the east side of the mountains anyway. Chungungo is not the only place with a water shortage. Since the success of the El Tofo project in 92, the scientists have helped build similar systems in five other areas. <coughs> one more in Chile, three in Peru, and one in Ecuador. A system for a second village in Ecuador is being built, and scientists have set up small nets to see if the idea will work in the African country of Namibia. The effort to make rain where it is needed is as old as the human race, but the fog project in Chungungo is the first time that the results of trying to bring water from the sky can be measured in gallons. That was pretty cool. See, I'm learning stuff from this. This was designed for people like a quarter my age, but I'm still enjoying this. Beth's puppy was skeptical and trusting with strangers. Nope. Kate was skeptical that her project would be completed in time. That's probably correct. 
If you scrape your knee, wash it well with a skeptical cream. <laughs> no, no, that's not it. I don't know if this cream is going to work. Okay, on to strategy. <clears throat> How did the people of Chungungo get their water after the El Topo project? Uh, the water was harvested from the fog. All right, you made it. Okay. Uh, clue. Okay. Gotta find the highlighted, uh, paragraph here. Do -do -do, there we go. Okay. Okay. Either nets for water collection or from fog to the faucet. I kind of like that. But the faucet doesn't come into, uh, into play yet, so let's go with nets for water collection. <clears throat> there we go. Back to the map. Desert Survival by Eileen N. Dosical. Do you Dosa think you Cal. can survive in the desert heat with very little or no water? Desert plants can. You'll discover that they have some very interesting survival techniques. Yeah, techniques that a human can't necessarily use. <laughs> I mean, you can, you can harvest the water from some of these plants. Deserts cover one-seventh of the Earth's surface. They are the very dry places of the world. Some, like northern Canada's windy plains, are cold. The deserts of the southwestern United States are both hot and dry. Some rain does fall a few times a year, but evaporates quickly into the dry air. The desert gets so hot because there are few clouds to scatter the sunlight. The dry air and clear skies let heat escape at night, while the Desert sun can scorch you during the day. You often need a jacket after sundown. A tough place to live? It is. If you've ever been out in the desert with the sun overhead, you soon began thinking of a shady place and a water fountain. So it's almost a surprise to notice how many plants and animals are able to live their whole lives in this hot, dry place. They've solved the lack of water problem by the way they are built or the way they behave. Plants can't move to hide from a hot sun. Instead, they have many special features, invented and evolved over thousands of years, that make desert life possible. Some have special roots and stems. Others, are just mo uh, others just rest most of the year and only come to life only after a rain. Many are so specialized for desert life that they would not survive anywhere else. Cacti are the best known desert plants. The prickly pear cactus is so common that it seems like a weed. Cacti have shallow roots that are spread out to catch the rain as soon as it enters the ground. Their spongy stems expand and fill up quickly with water, and their thick waxy coats seal up the water inside. Instead of water losing leaves, they have spines. The spines keep animals away and help reflect heat. The saguaro skyscraper of the cacti, the, the saguaro, the skyscraper of the ca cacti, is common in the Arizona desert. Its surface is pleated so that it can swell up like an accordion after a heavy rain. Desert shrubs have special survival techniques. The ocotillo survives dry periods by throwing away its leaves. Its dry stems look dead, but when enough rain falls, Green leaves appear again and all along, again all along the stems. 
The mesquite is a small tree that can live in some places because its roots go deep into the soil in search of groundwater. The creosote bush keeps other plants away that would compete for its water. Its roots make a poison that kills any nearby seedlings. Wildflowers have a way of life that you could call grow quickly and hide. These annual plants survive the dry part of the year by hiding in the soil as inactive seeds. The seeds have a growth inhibitor that enough water can wash away. After a heavy rain, the desert can change from its dull brown to a colorful garden as wild flowers quickly bloom. These plants are some of the world's fastest growing flowers. They must live their whole lives in the short time before the desert becomes dry again. I think I saw a picture on Twitter recently um, where uh, there was a, a rare uh, rain in one of the deserts in the southwest and it was looking all green. The, shy, the gopher is a shy animal with an inhibitor instinct. Nope. Ha thought her inhibitor would prevent her from doing well. No, not really. That inhibitor should prevent my car from rusting. Sounds like the closest thing. That inhibitor should prevent my car from rusting. Terrific! You got it! Yay! What is the main idea of this article? Um, desert plants have special features for desert survival. Excellent. Keep up the good work. And the clue. <clears throat> Oh, okay. One of these analogy things. Uh, pine trees are to forest as roots are to shrubs. No. That's probably the one. Yeah. Pine trees are to forest as cacti are to desert. Great. You got it. Great. You've got it. Okay. Back to the map. Two more to go and then we're done with this disc. I wonder what the next one is. Petrified Forest. Okay. Patrick McGill. Dead trees usually make us think of dark, empty <clears throat> logs on the ground. This article will open your eyes to what happens to some trees. Got all the discs here, I'm just kind of <laughs> deciding what I'm going to go to next. Okay. Ah, uh, no video. That's fine. They've just mostly been, like, showing you geographic locations lately. Come on. There we go. In the painted desert of northern Arizona, there are the strange and beautiful remains of the great forest. The trees contain all the colors of the rainbow, but there are no leaves or branches growing on any of the trees. This forest is made up of dead tree trunks, all fallen down and broken. And the strangest thing is that none of these tree trunks is wood. That doesn't sound right. Instead, each has turned to stone. This forest is the Petrified Forest, and it's a nat national park. The story of the Forest of Stone Logs goes back 200 million years to the Triassic period, a time so long ago that the Rocky Mountains had not yet been formed. Northern Arizona was a land of swamps and rivers instead of the dry desert-like land it is now. Tall pine-like trees grew in the hills and mountains surrounding the swamps. Many of these trees were over 200 feet high, with trunks up to 7 feet thick. As the trees got old and died, some of them fell into flooded streams. They were dragged along for miles until all of their leaves and branches had worn off. The streams carrying the trees passed through swamps where the trees became stuck in log jams or mud. The shifting rivers covered the logs with mud, sand, and other sediment. 
These deposits, saturated with water, prevented oxygen from getting to the logs and causing them to decay. What happened next is a process called petrification. Water with the mineral silica dissolved in it soaked into the logs, penetrating the wood cells and also holes created by rotten insects. As the silica-rich water fil filtered through the logs, the silica formed crystals of quartz, a very hard mineral. Gradually, these quartz crystals kept growing and after many years replaced the entire log. In some cases, the cell walls of the wood remained until quartz crystals duplicated the original wood in nearly perfect detail. In other cases, the crystals replaced the entire log without preserving any of the living patterns. The stream deposits of mud and clay in which the logs were buried are called the Chinle Formation. One area where the rocks are extremely colorful is called the Painted Desert. After millions of years, other sediments piled up on the Chinle Formation, but after, many, after more millions of years, erosion exposed its great treasure of petrified logs once again. This erosion by wind and water still goes on, and each year a little more of the Triassic forest is exposed for us to see. As the soft earth of the Painted Desert is eroded, the hard petrified logs remain, capping the ridges and hills. They sit on a narrow pedestal of earth until this is also undercut. Eventually, sections of logs roll off, and this is where they fall, and where, and where they fall the process begins again. Many logs tumble into stream beds, where they remained as the hills around them are worn away. Unless washed away in a flood, these petrified logs will sit here for thousands of years as the land around them is leveled. Erosion even affects the petrified logs, breaking them into small pieces like chips from a woodcutter's axe. This process will continue until the tiny chips are broken down further, and they will also be carried away by wind and water. About 70 million years ago, when the Rocky and the Sierra Nevada mountains were thrust upward, the region containing the petrified logs was also lifted up thousands of feet. The tremendous pressures of this earth movement produced the cracks in, which, in the logs, which eventually caused them to break. Petrified logs conceal colorful and sparkling minerals unseen until the logs are broken. A log containing only silica is white, light, tan, or gray. The water that provided the silica also contained other minerals which were added. Iron produced reds, yellows, and browns. Copper provided blue or green. Manganese and carbon added black. Other elements produced their characteristic colors. When the first Spanish explorers visited the southwest in 1540, there were no Indians living in the petrified forest area. However, more than 300 Indian ruins are located in the park. One small pueblo was even built from chunks of petrified wood. Like the face of a clock that we can't see moving, the petrified forest and the painted desert change very slowly each year. Instead of minutes and hours, these formations of nature tell time in hundreds of thousands and millions of years. The once great green forest of pine-like trees has become a colorful sparkling woodland of stone. The trees rested under the thick layers of mud, sand, and sediment until ages and ages passed. The change was ever so slow. Today this bit-by-bit -bit transformation continues, even if it's only a small lump of mud or a particle of petrified wood carried away by a brief summer rainstorm. For despite appearances, time does not stand still in the petrified forest. Okay, hold on for just one second. I gotta see if they have a picture of this. Because, honestly, I, I gotta see this someday. Okay, so it's just the drawing. Kind of get a good idea of it, but I'm gonna have to look up a picture of this later at some point. Okay. I 
After coming out of the ocean, the dog was saturated with water. That works. The saturated movie was extremely funny. Eh. When you order lunch, ask if they serve a saturated sandwich. I certainly hope not. I don't associate the term saturated with any sort of good sandwich. After coming out of the ocean, the dog was saturated with water. Excellent. Keep up the good work. I plan to. How does the process of petrification begin? Um, I'm going to go with the silica-rich water, because dead trees can lo lose their leaves and branches without necessarily becoming petrified. Even though that was kind of the first thing they mentioned. Great. You got it. <clears throat> okay, probably need to find... I wonder if I can click and drag that. Nope. Okay. Or is this just going to be like... Okay. All right, so it's not going to be talking about, you know, tropical trees or a forest lush and green or a growing forest, but I like this. From wood to stone they turn in this forest that cannot burn. That's cool. Nice going. All right. Last one. Prickly Pear Cacti by George W. Frame. Why did the Spanish explorers bring prickly pear cacti home with them? What use can cactus have? You might be surprised after reading this article. Do you want to know more? I do. I was surprised to see prickly pear cacti covering hundreds of square kilometers of African countryside. Prickly pears are plants of the Americas. What were they doing in Ethiopia, halfway around the world? I wondered if these prickly pears were descended from the cacti that the 16th century Spanish explorers dis discovered in Central America. The explorers learned from the Native Americans that the many kinds of prickly pear cacti provided food for people and livestock. So the Spaniards took some of the plants home with them. The cacti then spread throughout the Mediterranean and into North Africa. The prickly pear cacti that I saw growing in Ethiopia were planted there because they are useful in several ways. The long curved rows of cacti on the mountainside help protect the soil from washing away when it rains. Cattle, sheep, goats, and camels eat some of the prickly pear cacti when other food is scarce and people harvest the sweet, delicious red fruits to sell on the markets. The enlarged and flattened stems of the prickly pear cactus are called pads. Pads do for the cactus what leaves do for other plants. They contain the green food-making machinery. They also store water, which the cactus quickly takes up through its roots whenever there is rain. A thick skin and a waxy coat on the pads help to keep the water from evaporating away. The pores through which the planet through which plants take in carbon dioxide gas for making food are another way in which food is lost through evaporation. The cactus solves this problem by opening its pores only at night, when the desert air is cooler and less water escapes. Compared with plants that have leaves, the prickly pear cactus is less likely to dry out in the harsh climate of the desert. Most prickly pear cacti have two kinds of needles, or spines, which discourage animals from eating the juicy pads. One kind of spine is long, stiff, and sharp. The other kind of spine is tiny, with dozens or even hundreds of barbs too small to be seen by the eye. Around my backyard garden in Utah, I learned the hard way that I should not touch a prickly pear pad. Dozens of tiny, tiny spines stuck in my skin, and I felt painful itching for hours afterward. 
When grasses are scarce, ranchers sometimes feed their cattle chopped up prickly pear pads, or sometimes they burn off the thorns so the cactus no longer has protection from being eaten. Then they feed the cattle whole juicy stems. A plant breeder, Luther Burbank, developed a special form of prickly pear cactus with spineless fruits and pads. These were especially good for human and cattle food. Livestock have helped Oops, ah, crap. Livestock have helped the prickly pear cacti to spread. When large numbers of cattle were introduced into Arizona beginning in the 1870s, their grazing caused many kinds of plants to disappear. This allowed more prickly pear cacti to grow because there was less competition for water, soil, and sunlight. Cattle also accidentally carried around prickly pear pads. These pads broke off the plants when their long spines clung to the animal's fur. In this way, the prickly pear cacti put the animals to work for them, carrying the plants to new places. About 100 species of prickly pear cacti live in the United States. Most are native to the deserts of the southwest. They are an important food for dozens of species and of mammals and birds. Rats, mice, and ground squirrels eat many of the seeds. Deer and pronghorn antelope sometimes eat the fruits and younger stems. The success of, the, of prickly pear cacti shows how well suited they are for life in the deserts and drier grasslands. These and other cacti grow and reproduce in places where leafy plants cannot live because cacti conser conserve water and protect themselves with spines. Prickly pear cacti are beautiful and useful, providing food for wild animals, domestic livestock, and man. Man, all this talking is making me a, making me a little lightheaded. Running out of air. Jose descended to the top of the mountain. Wrong way. Anne was descended from her parents and grandparents. That sounds about right. Marla descended with her relatives at a family reunion. Well, she could have. I mean, if she walked down the stairs with them, that's entirely possible. But that's probably not the right answer. Anne was descended <laughs> from her parents and grandparents. Right on. I knew you could do it. Just so you know, I'm not cutting him off when he's doing that. It just happens. Sadly. How did the prickly pear cacti spread into Northern Africa? Um, Spaniards took home plants from Central America. Yep, that sounds about right. Right on. I knew you could do it. Thank you. Your validation means everything to me. Leaves are ro to roses as needles are to pain. <laughs> wow, okay. Uh, leaves are to roses as paths are to cacti. Yeah, sort of. Roots are to rain, no. Cacti are to food, no. Let's go with pads are to cacti. Right on. I knew you could do it. There we go. Oh, we did it. We're on our way home. Not so fast. The game is not over yet. What? Continue to search for the directions. Vive le jeu. Vive le what? It means we're still stuck here in the 1800s. <laughs> what, all you had to do is just slam your hand on the keyboard and you win? <laughs> okay, that's not bad green screening, but it was kind of okay. What did you do? Well, at least we know the machine still works. Kind of. I was almost stampeded. You were? Well, how do you like the Wild West so far? <laughs> Are you shitting me? <laughs> that was a great reaction. And we're just kicked right back to the beginning. All right. 
So this is only one of many. There we go. Uh, of of many like this. Want to play a new game or restart? But I don't have any of the others, so we're gonna have to move on to a different uh, series entirely. So. Let's close content. <clears throat> and where is it? Load content. There we go. <clears throat> Okay, the one I want is Road Rider. This one sounds like it might be kind of interesting. Don't worry, the burbling is... Uh, the emulator I'm using takes a little bit of time to uh, catch up. Expert or pro? What? The expert road is a good place to begin. The pro road is a fast-paced ride. <laughs> the expert road is a good place to begin. Way to be obscure, jeez. Chaucer. Ralph. Ralph. Gwen. Miguel. All right. Well, let's start the with the expert road then. Is a good place oh wait. Intro video. Got to write a story, got something to say. We're on the right way, got to say it out. And the story unfolds. We're on I like the animation. It actually kind of reminds me of Toe Jam and Earl style, just a little bit. Let's head to the expert road. There we go. New game. Can you actually save games on this one? Fasten your seat belts and let's go. Or is it going to use a password? If you okay. None of these have even touched the memory card slot yet. Fasten your seat belt. Which I kind of understand if these were supposed to be used in schools. You don't want to have to have kids, like, losing memory cards and such. Oh, we get to watch this again. All right. Gotta write a story, got something to say. We're on the right way, gotta say it out. And the story unfolds. We're on.
That's pretty cool. This is the map. Pick a place you'd like to drive to. And let's go! Let's go! New La Mancha Canyon. Well, that seems like it's the first, you know, branch off of the main road, so... Welcome to La Mancha Canyon. Click the table to play right... Oops. Okay. These are the games that need to be completed at the paragraph checkpoint. Click one and let's begin. Those kind of look like Game Boys behind them. <laughs> Outlines. It is a good I hate outlines. Idea. First, the main idea, then the surprise <laughs> detail. Go ahead, try it. You okay. Um. Okay, so there's a lot of stuff here. So first off, things that smell good looks like goes here. Ah, man, I wish this was compatible with the mouse. Things that taste sour. I hear barking dogs are a bit sour. I try not to drink old milk. Okay. Hearing things that are loud. Barking dogs can be pretty loud. Careful now, picking it. Beep, beep, beep. Did it. This feels a bit more game like than, uh, than the last one, at least. Pick a level. I'm gonna start uh, with this one, and then next time uh, we'll take the higher difficulty. If I feel like I need more of a challenge. Revising this writing piece. Give me a hand, will you? I'm sure we can make it better. Yesterday there was a storm. It rained all day. Everything got wet. Okay, so at first I thought it was going to be like picking interesting synonyms, but uh, I guess it's just mostly um, uh, picking correct grammar. Closer. Click the next button to continue play. Just give me one quick second. Click the next button to continue. Okay, there we go. There are five senses. <laughs> I mean, that's how they have it written. Okay, that's weird. So I just had to. Way to go! You're getting closer. <laughs> there are five senses. Click the next button to continue play. <clears throat> I love airplanes. They fly high in the sky. I love. It's so tempting to like screw around with this. But I don't have the patience for getting it wrong and then fixing it. Oops. I love airplanes because they fly high in the sky. There we go. Way to go! You're 
getting closer. I love airplanes because they fly high and click the next button. Okay. I like to recycle paper and plastic. It keeps, makes. Earth cleaner. Way to go! Click the next button. I like to jump in puddles when it rains. It is fun. I like the rain. I do. Rain is soothing. I didn't sleep very well last night. Maybe I should put some rain sounds on when I go to when I try to sleep tonight. Alright, proofreading. I'm gonna stick with the lower level for now and yeah. Alright, it's time for proofreading. Put on your magnifying glasses and let's hunt for spelling, punctuation, and capital Here are some shortcuts you may use to help. Oh wow. We actually get to use more buttons than just the X button. Um, hold on for a sec. Just gonna grab a quick screenshot of this. There we go. Yep, I know. I did. There we go. Okay. So, first thing I noticed is that this I is not capitalized. So... Let's... There we go. Okay. Uh, listen to sounds. Looks like we need a period. Okay. There isn't a uh, shortcut for punctuation. That's not what I did. <laughs> Freaking out every time I get to the clear button there. Sounds at the beach. I'm guessing we're not talking about the tree. Whoops. Had the shift on. Is there a backspace? Yep. Okay, good. to hear the waves crash. Great job. You're an ex Find the I also like to hear the birds chirp and that needs a period at the end. Happy I have ears that hear these wonderful sounds. Great job! You're an excellent editor. I know my stuff when it comes to oh, things like this. Click the speaker icon to listen to the final piece, or click done to get back to the rest. Yeah, I'm 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 done. Okay, it's writing time. Click writing assignment and let You see, Ralph, a paragraph is kind of like a family. All the sentences are related to each other. 
the first sentence introduces the topic, and the middle sentences explain or describe the main idea. Oh, I got ya. <laughs> then all that's left is the last sentence, which sums it all up. <laughs> Let's right on. Here are some shortcuts to make your writing easy. Um, okay. So this one has enter a word added. So I think I'll grab this screenshot. There we go. Use the arrows below to select a topic, an audience, a purpose, and a tone. When you're ready to write, click set. If you okay. Um. Sure, we'll do ways of getting around. Audience. I'll say my friends, purpose to entertain, tone, friendly, yeah, that works. All right, set. Okay, you're ready to write. Click exit to begin. Here's your keyboard and writing space. Use the letter keys to write or scroll through the topics below to get a word bank to choose words. Go ahead, explore! I have to actually write using this? Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Okay. I am not going to do this. <laughs> Sorry, game. Hold on. This will erase all your Ta-da! Nice writing partner. You certainly have a way with words. Yes, I do. Well, a right way with word. Come on, Chaucer. Time waits for no dog. Great! Here's the password for this checkpoint. Write it down, click OK, and let's get back on the road. If I was a kid, I would have loved doing that. I would have been sitting there hammering something out. Um, but right now I'm trying to entertain, and I'm feeling nervous enough as it is with all of the reading stuff without having you sit watching me try to figure out what to write. <laughs> okay, click to contest to drive back to the rally, or click to map to choose. Um, what's the visitor center? We didn't really click on that earlier. Oh, okay. <clears throat> All right, let's check out New Bronzeville, see what it has to offer. I could go right to the rally contest, but uh, I should probably do all of this other stuff first. are the games that need to be completed at the story checkpoint. Click one and let's get started. You got it. All right. Brainstorming is my favorite part. 
This cluster needs some ideas. Put on your thinking cap and let's begin. You know, maybe if I did actually use structure like this, I'd uh, hate writing my scripts a little less. Seals. Yeah, I know. I want to put that word in here. Word. Is now full of great ideas. Okay. Sure have a vivid... Pick a level. All right, let's do a harder difficulty here. See what happens. Hey, I'm in the middle of revising this writing piece. Give me a hand, will you? I'm sure we can make it better. Okay. Last summer, my family and I took a vacation. We went to the beach. My Aunt Nancy let us stay in her beach house. Aunt Nancy's. Okay, good. Making me choose the correct uh, way to put the possessive in there. Aunt Nancy's beach house is close to the beach. No kidding! Click the next button. The boys and girls watch as the dolphins and whales splash in the water. The children think that the dolphins are tame. The whales are wild, not tame. I mean, they're, they, they're probably kind, sweet, and gentle too, but they are wild. And saying not tame after it implies that we're looking for an antonym to tame, so. You're a genius! Click the. The 4th of July is one of my favorite holidays to celebrate. Oh, one of these, okay. Ta. 4th. of Julie. And Thanksgiving. Okay, so we're rearranging this. Are two of my favorite holidays. Okay, that was a little bit more of a challenge. You're a genius! The 4th of July and Thanksgiving are two of my favorite holidays. Click the next button to continue play. My grandpa moved to the United States to have a bestest life. Oh, it's better life. He wanted to make sure his family would be safe. My grandpa loves his family very much. He is my hero. Whoops, no. Getting closer. Click the next button to continue playing. Oh man, you know what? I'm kind of tempted to take these with me to my sister's place the next time I go out there and leave them with a PlayStation. <laughs> Cuz she homeschools and the kids would love this. Okay. 
Last night we hiked to the pond. The evening moon shone brightly. We saw dragonflies and fireflies hovering over the water. Most of the dragonflies had blue and green bodies. The fireflies shone brightly like candles. We tried to catch some of the fireflies, but they were too fast for us. Congratulations! Congratulations! You're to check your progress on the checklist and get back to the road rally. All right, on to proofreading. All right, it's time for proofreading. Put on your magnifying glasses and let's hunt for spelling, punctuation, and capital. What stinks is my sister has a PS4, but we can't play PS1 games on the PS4. Oh no. <laughs> okay, once upon a time, comma. There lived a caterpillar named Curly, which should be capitalized. proper name. Way to go. He was sad because he didn't know how to become a butterfly. Didn't needs an apostrophe. Great job. You're an excellent editor. Find the next error. He was tired of being a caterpillar. Okay. Okay. It's spelled properly elsewhere in the thing. So it's kind of weird that the uh, um, person actually writing this spelled it wrong. But it gives whoever's playing this game an idea of how it's supposed to be spelled. Pillar. Okay. Way to go! Find the. He asked his friend Sammy, which needs to be capitalized. There we go. Great job. What Great. he should do. Sammy Spider told him to make a cocoon. Curly said, thank you, Sammy. But we need a quotation mark. Next time Sammy saw Curly, Curly was a beautiful butterfly. Awesome! You are on the right. All right, you did it. Yay! I kind of like those. Those are fun. I'm gonna skip the writing assignment again. Hey, those characters are in some of my favorite stories. You know, wait a second. The wee mouse, my favorite story, which starts once upon a time. The one on the left was uh, the bad guy of the uh, um uh Casmania thing we were playing a couple weeks ago. Needs a beginning, a middle, and an end. Oh, they must begin. <laughs> Here are some shortcuts to. Use the arrows below to select. Okay, you're ready to. Here's your keyboard. Bear, 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 bear. Grab a
<laughs> it's almost as good as the uh plop 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 plop. It's a monster. <laughs> nice piece of writing. You're a natural storyteller. Come on, let's get this show on the road. Sure thing. All right, on to the next one. Okay, click to contest. This is Let's go to Mount Hans next. I keep forgetting that they get interrupted by you pressing a direction on the D-pad. I love outlines. It is a good way to organize ideas. First, the main idea. Okay. The supporting details. Go ahead. Let's see here. Getting dishwater ready, I guess. Put stopper in sink. Squirt in some dish soap. Fill sink with water. Ah. There we go. No. Careful now. Washing dishes. Scrape food off dishes. Scrub dishes. Well, put dishes in the water, scrub dishes, rinse dishes, drying dishes, get dish towel, dry dishes with towel, empty water out of sink. There we go. Great. Beep, beep, beep. I wonder if this gives me more points. Hey, I'm in the middle of revising this writing piece. Give me a hand, will you? I'm sure we can make it better. I have a fish tank. Twice a month I have to clean it. First I use a small fish net. To take the fish out of the tank. I put them in a bowl of special cool water. Next, I dump the dirty water out of the tank. Then I fill the tank with clean water. I add a special mixture from a bottle. Now my fish are ready to go back into the fish tank. I've debated getting fish, but I can't stand cleaning fish tanks. So I'd have to get something that's basically, like, as self-cleaning as possible. Taking care of a pet isn't no trouble. Ooh. Ow. Okay. Taking care of... a pet. is no trouble. Yeah, I gotta get rid of that double negative. Great! You are on the Taking care of a pet is no trouble. Click the next button to continue play. I would also slightly disagree with that, but there are upshots to it as well. Okay, I like to clean our house. Ah, 
Ah. So I can get a big allowance. Gee, I wonder if I got an allowance for cleaning my house, if it would be cleaner. I mean, it's not that bad. I like to clean our house so I can get a big I do a decent job of it, but to continue play. It's always room for improvement. <clears throat> Last don't whoops. Have any lumps in the just put cake there because it's supposed to be there. Last, don't have any lumps in the cake batter. No one likes lumpy cake. Last, don't have any lumps in the cake. Click the next button to continue play. Every Saturday we have a family barbecue. My dad makes the most delicious hamburgers in the whole wide world. Mmm, hamburgers. First he puts barbecue sauce on the hamburgers. Next he cooks them on the grill. Next he cooks us on the grill? Good lord. Then he puts the hamburgers in between the buns. Last he... Oh, everybody puts stuff like ketchup and mustard on their burgers. It's the way to do it. You are on the... Except I didn't see them say anything about cheese. Gotta have cheeseburgers and bacon. Maybe some mushrooms in Swiss. I love a good mushroom Swiss burger. Level two. All right, it's time for proofreading. Put Ooh. on your magnifying glass. So here they're not telling you how to pro how to uh, correctly spell vegetable. At least not easily. That's fine. It's veg -e table. Awesome! You are on the right. Find the next error. It is good to pull weeds out of the vegetable garden. First, you need to dig down deep into the soil. When you do this, it is a good idea to where okay get rid of that put an a there get rid of that e great job to wear gardening gloves then okay we probably need capitalization here Then you, you loosen up the wheat's roots. This is extremely important. We don't need that comma there. Come on. There we go. Awesome! You are a If you don't need an apostrophe. I've just had an apostrophe. If you don't get the roots, the weed will grow back. A garden looks much better without weeds. Oh. If you don't get the roots, comma. I guess I should be paying attention to the top of the screen where it tells me the only error left is punctuation. <laughs> Way to go! 
I'm like, no, that's the right version of the word root. No, thank you. Alright, time for a BS writing assignment. Myself. You Rika! Easy boy, awake the neighbors. But your instructions make everything so clear. They describe all the steps and in what order they need to be done. Come on, we've got a lot more writing to do. <laughs> Here are some shortcuts to make your writing easy. Use the arrows below to select the top. Yeah, yeah. Here's your keyboard and writing. All right, let's uh, pick a different animal to spam. Sure. Gorilla, gorilla, gorilla. I mean, it probably wouldn't have been too difficult for them to uh, make sure that there was actually proper punctuation and capitalization and all of that in there. And call me out on this. But they didn't, so I don't care. All right, one more stop to go. I don't feel the need to do the pro thing after okay. this. Click to contest to drive. Dodgson Creek. Ah. <sighs> Creek. Click the table to play writing games or the map sign to go somewhere else. Okay. I wasn't sure if they said anything like more unique for each one. I guess not. All right. Brainstorming My vacation. This cluster needs some ideas. Put on your thinking cap and let's begin. Let's see here. Go to the zoo? I definitely go to the zoo on vacations. Um, I visit museums. I go to the beach. Though it's usually Lake Superior, so there isn't a lot of swimming. Um, enjoying nature, definitely. And... Uh, sure. I was going to say hiking, too, but that's kind of included in enjoying nature for me. We've got a bonus word. How, they, how do they decide what a bonus world word is? You sure have a vivid... Pick a level. I don't hey, know. I'm in the middle of revising this writing piece. Give me a Okay. Pack. Uh, pack. The t-shirts. Shorts. And sandals. In the suitcase. And then close the suitcase. You're beep beep beep. Pack 
the t-shirts, shorts, and sandals in the suitcase, and then close the suitcase. Click the next. I like playing soccer. I can make a lot of goals. You know, the last time I really played soccer... Okay, maybe not the last time I played soccer, but the one, one time when I was younger I played soccer and I went to kick it at the same time as another kid and twisted my ankle really badly. And I was at a summer camp and I, I uh, hopped most of the way across the camp to where the, I knew the nurse's station was and she wasn't there. Turns out she was at the field. <laughs> So I hopped like all the way back. This was probably a good mile total. It was not fun. You're a genius. I like playing soccer, and I can make a lot. I I can't make a lot of goals. The last time I played soccer was with a bunch of uh, uh, Mexican kids, and man, they they just schooled us. Like, in Mexico, uh, we were just playing with a bunch of kids there. It was funny. Dear Uncle John, I can hardly wait to go snow skiing with you in December. I'm going to bring my warmest clothes. Dad bought me a thick ski jacket. It's blue. I like it a lot. I hope Cousin Tim will be there, too. Oh, looks like there might be more. See you soon, just in. Okay. Way to go! You're getting closer! Click the next button to continue play. Dear Mom, Dad and I are going to plant... Plant flowers in the front yard. <clears throat> I think it will make our neighborhood look better. Yesterday I went to the store and bought flower seeds. Next week dad is coming over to help me plant them. Love, Nat Han. Okay. Closer. Click the next button to continue play. Dear Cousin Michelle, I didn't think it was going to be very much fun staying at your farm for a whole summer. I thought it would be boring, but it was excited. exciting. I liked milking the cows. I, I, I've had fun chasing cows. They're fast. You wouldn't believe how fast cows can be just looking at them. I liked riding horses the most. Oh, that's mostest. Let's go with best. Molly is my favorite horse. It's <laughs> my worst horse. Even collecting eggs was fun. Do you think your parents will let you visit me next year? There are lots of things to do in the city. Right back soon. Your cousin, M. Axe. Congratulations! Yay! Click done to check your progress on the. Click done. Pick Proof reading. All right, it's time for proofreading. Put on your magnifying glass. Okay. Yep, I know. Okay, on Saturdays, Saturdays needs to be capitalized. Great job. My brother and I help our dad with his work. Huh, okay. Oops. Uh, no. Oh, fine. Great job. Okay. Scroll down. 
We feed the horses and cows and give them fresh water, period. Way to go. Find the next era. We also collect. That needs an extra L. We also collect eggs from the chickens. Sometimes my brother and I get to ride on our tractor. It is fun to help on our farm. Sincerely, Tim Mai. That needs to just be... Get a comma after it. Great there we go. You're an excellent editor. No, thank you. We're done. Then I just need to uh, cheese through the writing assignment. <laughs> what you're doing, you're thinking, and what you're feeling. And be polite. Ask about the other person, too. Come on, we got a lot more writing to do. Let's go! Here's... Okay. Um, below to set. Okay. Exit. Here's your key. And let's change this to, sure, weather, cloudy, cloudy, cloudy. Grab a... I wonder if I should be submitting these as speed runs. <laughs> It'd be hilarious to do that at least with one of them. If I received a letter that just said cloudy, 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 I'd wonder what, like, if it was code for I've been kidnapped, please send help. Here's the password for this. All right, drive to finish line. Hooray! Congratulations! Oh wow, look at that party! The Road Rider Grand Prize. <laughs> I don't know why, but I need to mark this for possible clipping later. <laughs> oh, and that's it for that one. That didn't take too long. But I got plenty of these, so we'll just move on to another one. Welcome to our road riding adventure. Ex okay. I am going to save state on this. Because it seems like it kept track of the fact that I had finished Expert, the so the if I ever decide to come back to this. Ride. Close content. And load content. If you're wondering what device I'm using here, I am using my PlayStation TV. It's been uh, soft modded, so I've got Retro Arch on here. And that's what I'm using to play all of these. So, I mean, I know you can run 
Um, I know you can run this stuff natively on the PS TV, but you need to put it into a special file format. This way, all I had to do was rip the disc and throw the bin queue in there, and I can play it. So it just makes it easier. So we'll get a start on this one. It's Mars Moose Stay and Play. And I actually have parts one, two, and three of this. So this will definitely uh, go on to uh, tomorrow night's stream. Depending on how long it takes. Welcome to the world of Mars Moose. Yay, Mars Moose. Stay and play. Yeah. In the clubhouse. Language arts and reading for K through two, this probably isn't gonna take very long. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> That's more me. Take a look. My ranger badge. Oh, that's really quiet, isn't it? I'd like to become rangers. If you do, go through the door into the clubhouse. Okay. Great. Let's go in. Yes, hi. So, you want to be a ranger. There are a lot of fun things you can do to get your badge. Let's look at the club poster. Okay. You can always look at this poster to remember what you Ma. have to do to become a club member. After you explore them all, you'll get your ranger badge. Go ahead and select the pictures on the poster to hear what you can do while you're exploring. When you're ready to begin, go back to the clubhouse. Have fun! Now let's just go back to the clubhouse. Uh, is that this? Nope. Ah, there we go. Just click one of the walls to begin. Let's go to the fish tank Select first. An object to take a closer. To get your ranger badge, you have to feed the fish and add water to the aqua. Okay, so it's basically getting you to associate the words with the actions and with hearing the word. <laughs> and add water. If the water sounds like that, 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 that might be a problem. Yay! Wow! There's lots of fun stuff to do in the clubhouse. My little cat. You can stay and play or explore the rest of the clubhouse. Let's see what clicking on the fish tank does. Nope, nothing else? Okay. I don't need to feed the fish again. What'd you find? Hmm. Hey! 
She looked like she'd seen something, so I was just a little, uh... Oh, there's little hot spots all over the place. Hell yeah. That's the same sound that was used for the fly. Boo. Hey, boys and girls, I'm Jammin' Jamie, bringing you the classic hits from yesterday and today. Here's one right now. Thank you, Jam and Jamie. That was enjoyable. All right, what else we got? This is a fun game. First, click the word cards or the picture cards. Cards will come out and you'll hear a word from the tape recorder. Listen carefully. Then, click the card that has the matching word. If you need to hear the word again, click the play button on the tape recorder. Score 21 points and you'll get a star. Click okay. the word cards or the picture cards. Rabbit. Rabbit. Beep 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 beep. Dog. Ooh. So now sometimes I appreciate uh, them trying to actually trip you up, and Day looks a lot like Dog. If you didn't, if you were just learning what letters are like. And duck again, sounds a lot like dog. Your guess. dog. Kite. Good, they still have words on the pictures. Kite. Student. Student. Ta ta da! I gotta do this 21 times? Jeez. Garden. 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 It'd be nice if the words gave like two points or something. Man. Man. Father. Father. But what if father is a fish? Tent. Tent. Diddly diddly. Boy. Boy. Okay, one more from here. I think I'll just switch back and forth every five points. Horse. Just Horse. switch things up a little bit. Violin. Violin. Queen. 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 A quarter quail for the queen. World. Interesting. I don't know if this has been happening and I'm only now noticing it, but world is actually highlighted in yellow. <laughs> The world is full of water and women. Water. 
Lion. Ooh. The lion locked the lion. lamp. Xylophone. Sebek? They're really expecting kids to know what a Zebek is? I, I I didn't even know that word existed. <laughs> Xylophone. I mean, I guess it's a kind of boat, but geez. This is supposed to be for kindergarten to two, second grade. Yo -yo. Yo -yo. Picture. The police got a picture of a puppy. Picture. Dee -dee -dee -dee. Zebra. Zebra. No, um, I am actually playing using a uh, PlayStation TV, so um, the Dual Shock just natively works. Cat. Yay, cat. Cat. And actually, um, uh, Retro Arch tends to work pretty Gem. well with the Dual Shock for without DS4 Windows. <clears throat> All right. Point number twenty-one. We'll go back to the pictures. Night. 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 Because the DualShock 4 will sync up with Windows with no problem. Steam will recognize it as a DualShock 4. It'll even do, let you do stuff with the uh, uh, light bar. Some programs that are a little bit more picky might have issues, like AntStream will not play well with this so for that i actually have a uh, chronos max dongle and uh so i just plug my dualshock 4 into that and plug that into the machine and it uh reads it as an xbox controller i don't think i want to go through that curtain right now Choose a wall and help. Um, okay, that's the wall I was just looking at. Let's go to the left. Go ahead. Explore this wall and I hope that's not hitting the okay, good. Microscopes let you look at things that are way too small to see. Why don't you pick a slide and take a closer look? Okay. In general, I'm not that much of a PC gamer. Spyro Gyra. Okay, that is kind of cool. Blood, blood, blood. Those things that look like donuts are red blood cells. Take a deep breath. You just filled your red blood cells with oxygen. <laughs> well, getting a little bit of science into this. I, I kind of like that. Hair. Hair. It's brown hair. What color hair do you have? I'm brownish. It's just messy, which is why I wear the hat. <laughs> Blood. Bone. Bone. Bones, bones, bones. That's what these cells are from. They're a lot stronger 
represent up. Bones, bones, bones. Hi, Siren. Hi. Do I get a badge? Thank you. Wow! There's lots of fun stuff to do in the clubhouse. You can stay and play or explore the rest of the clubhouse. Well, let's explore more of the clubhouse. What? Okay, if its eye is there, I am a little nervous about where I'm putting my eye. Awesome. Do you know how high a hot air balloon can go? Not as high as starboard. Well, no, but it still gets pretty high. You don't need starboard to see the moon up close. Look, these stars are shaped like a dipper. They're called the Big Dipper. They won't be forever. <laughs> Great! You're halfway done! Yay! You can stay and play or explore the rest of the clubhouse. But that said, uh Omni, I I used to use uh like tools to use my DualShock 3 with PCs for quite a while too. I'm just so glad that the PS4 controller works so much more smoothly with it. In fact, I, I used uh, DualShock 4 to play Civilization once um, using the touchpad. That was actually kind of fun. Okay. <laughs> Is it going to be... Okay. Man. I want to go roller skating. Stupid coronavirus. But that's another reason I haven't gone roller skating. I need better socks. I need ones that'll go up past where the, the roller skate rests on the back of my leg. Because I scraped up the back of my leg pretty badly the last time I went roller skating. Because I have low socks. Go ahead. Choose a wall and Okay, so let's choose the back wall now. This stuff looks pretty interesting. Take a closer look. Letty planted this sweet, sweet potato. potato. Lonnie planted this geranium. All rangers help take care of the plants. Would you mind helping out? Sure. Can you please um, I think you were going to say, please water. Um, do I water the sweet potato? Okay. There we go. Sweet potato pie is on the way. Sweet potato pie can be made any day. Sweet potato pie can taste real sweet. If you leave out the eyes, it can't be beat. <coughs> yeah. Wow! Only a few <laughs> more fun activities, and you'll get to be... Get to be what? Thanks for All watering right. the plants.
What's on the board? Wow, these pictures show the life cycle of the butterfly. Okay. If you put them in order, you'll get a star. Select a picture and then click where you want to place it in the slide. Okay. Egg. Egg. Larva. Larva. Chrysalis. Chrysalis. And butterfly. Great! You got the life cycle of a butterfly. The butterfly lays an egg. The larva hatches from the egg. I don't know. And, and then makes a chrysalis. Then the butterfly comes out of the chrysalis and flies away. And you know, it's not bad. And they're like seriously. Okay. This is the second month that I've done these. I don't do them consecutive months. But I still have a lot to go through. And I don't have anywhere near all of them. But I had never even heard of this stuff before a chance encounter last year. So, like, these people had to have had quite a bit of cash to work with. I, it, but they're not like PBS. It's not an offshoot of PBS. I'm actually really impressed with these things. Abkadefkajikalmanopkristuvertsis. Full of bugs. Click on a letter to see an insect whose name starts with that letter. Okay. Look at them all, and you get a star. Give it a try. A is for American That's American cheating. <laughs> I'm sure you could have come up with like aphid or something like that. That's cheating. B is for Baltimore butterfly. Why not just butterfly? C is for Kelowna moth. D is for <laughs> Desert Hairy Scorpion. E is for Elephant Stag Beat. Okay, that's like the first one where it's kind of understandable that there's a qualifier at the beginning. F is for Ferocious Water. Now that isn't. Come on. G is for Goldenrod Spider. H is for Harlequin Cabbage Bug. Oops. Missed the eye. I is for Imperial Moth. Thought I heard cat sneeze. J is for Jagged Ambush Butt. <laughs> no, whatever. K is See, there we go. Did. We're like a third of the way through the alphabet, and now we finally have where it's like actually just Katie did. Is for Luna Moth Caterpillar. M is for Mabel Orchard Spider. N is for Northern Walking. O is for Ornate right? Tiger. Right. That's that's what I'm that's what I'm talking about, Ed Jones. It's like they could have come up with actual like different kinds of bugs for each letter rather than just different types of bugs that happen to start with a certain letter. P is for Partridge Scallops. Q is for Queen Caterpillar. And I wouldn't I wouldn't begrudge them doing stuff like that on stuff like Q where it might be a little bit difficult. R is for Red Velvet Ant. Hi, Siren. Is for saddleback caterpillar. Your face is wet. You must have been drinking water. T is for tarantula. There we go. So we've got Katie Dids and tarantulas. U is for unmarked <laughs> slender. Ah, oh, jeez. V is for valley grasshopper. V is like for valley grasshopper. W is for Willow Borer B. What do you keep seeing down there? <laughs> she 
keeps jumping down there like she sees something. X is for Zisticus Elegant. Yeah, see, that's another one. X, okay, fine. Fudge that one. Y is for Yellow Douglas Fir. Couldn't even say the whole Z thing. Is for zebra swallowtail. Yay! We made it through the alphabet. Only one more activity to go. You can stay and play, or explore the rest of. No thanks. So, where's the magnet thing? Not sure what I think about sentient betting. Might be the TV. I didn't uh, click on that when I was looking at that wall. Go ahead. Choose a wall. Hmm. Guess not. All right. Well, let's go through the curtain then. Or not. It's just going to flap at us. Okay, so where's the magnet thing? Go ahead. Choose a wall and help. Um Unless I need to click No, no, cuz the computer was the bug deal. Ah, jeez, what the hell? You can have my sweet potato, just don't eat me. Hmm. Go ahead. Choose a wall and help. Oh, I think I see a magnet up there on the shelf. Like right there. There we go. Magnets okay. Are really neat. Have you ever played with one? Yep. How many of these objects on the table do you think the magnet will pick up? Give it a try and earn a star. Click the magnet and move it over each object. <laughs> Enjoy, Ence Jones. Thanks for popping in. Picks up. To put something back on the table. Um, okay, I wasn't sure if the jacks were going to be metal or not. Yay! You finished all of the fun activities on our club boat. Jeez, that volume now, drops fast. Ranger, just like me. I can't wait till our next adventure. Welcome to the world of Mars Moose. Thanks, Mars Moose. Okay, well, that got us through uh, Mars Moose Adventure number one. Stay and play in the clubhouse. Um, we'll move on to uh, Adventure number two tomorrow night. But uh, I think it's close enough to 11 to, to stop for now. So, let's take a look and see who we can raid. Do -do -do. Um, let's go with Nooblet. I, I don't... It's been a while since I've raided Noob. And, uh... Noob and um, come on, show me the name. Yeah, Noob's playing uh, Stardew Valley tonight, so that should be interesting to watch. Thank you for dropping by. Whether you've been lurking or not, I appreciate it. Um, we'll be doing more of this this week and next week. 
uh, and the week after that. But I do have something planned for the last Monday stream of this month. It's still educational, but it's not going to be one of these. So stick around for that. Um, but uh, in the meantime, enjoy Nublet Pixel. <laughs>